everyone welcome back in this video we'll try to learn how we can use uh, cache into our service all right so first uh, we'll understand this uh, thing from uh, from this image all right so you can see there is a client which is nothing but ui or it can be any app and we have any service component and we have a db and this uh, cache component it's very simple thing all right so what will happen normally when you call an api it will go to service api i mean like any service which is running and then whatever you need it will fetch from the db and return to you but what we want we want to cache the data in between so what will happen next time uh, so when we use a cache component so whenever you make an api call it will come to service it will check into the cache uh, server if the data is there it will return from directly from there otherwise it will do a db call get the data and then it will cache it before returning and once the data is cached it will return the same data to the client so what will happen next time whenever the api or any any client is calling with the same parameter i mean the service what it will do it will check the cache whether the data is there or not since we cached it before it will return directly data from this cache survey and uh, it will not make the db call so that is how we will improve the, our you know performance of the service so again so what will do and there are many ways to cache data we can directly cache it and then it will be available all the time and otherwise what we can do we can put some expiry time to the data so what will happen what will happen second time whenever you calling the api with even the, with the similar parameter if the data is expired you won't be finding the data into the cache server so what it will do with that time again it will call the db and save the data and set the expiry time again and it will return if you call the same api again within the expiry time it will return directly from the cache it will not make the db call this is the second thing third thing is explicitly we have to you know expire the data or invalidate the data from the cache how it will how it can happen so as you again we'll take the stuff from the beginning you will make api call it won't find the data into the cache so it will call db get the data cache it return to the client second time again it will call the api with a similar parameter this time it will be able to find the data in the cache so it will return directly from this cache and uh, give it to the client now in what cases we may, we can make the uh, this uh, data invalidate or we have to expire explicitly what will happen if what if if their client is calling a post put or a delete either of one in that case we should you know invalidate or depending on the business scenario by the way so uh, normally i just i'm just covering all three like put post and delete like uh, so in these three cases you have to invalidate because what if you're doing some operation with the you are creating and you're updating or you are deleting but if the cache is same as it is it was before these met uh, these api calls then it will be a you know data redundancy so just to avoid that you just make sure whenever you are making a post put or delete just invalidate the data from the cache also so the whenever a user is requesting to fetch the data from the uh, from the service they should get always the latest data so what will happen since the second time you cached it whenever a user is trying to do a post put and delete you what you do you come to the service and you validate the data from the cache and then do whatever operation and save it to db now whenever next time whenever is trying to client is trying to get the data from the service what it will do it will check in the cache and data won't be there it will make a db call then this time it will again save the latest data into the cache and then return to the client this is the way uh, we should be able to uh, i mean we should implement it all right so this is all about from the image now let's try to see the demo so i have created a simple live api solution for the same and as you can see i have implemented two types of cache or first is in memory cache and the second is uh, in memory cache and the second one is radish okay so first i'll uh, show you the radish oh sorry in memory one so there is a flag i have created in the app setting you can see root uh, use radish cache and that is reset it to form so that it can use it in memory one, cache one and otherwise if i set it to it will use the uh, cache redis cache server and my redis cache service is running on the docker machine and then uh, the port of uh, the ip of that machine is uh, this one 192.168.99.101 which you can see running over here i'll show you once i come to the redis part so first i'll cover the uh, in memory cache so it's it's set to false now let's run it okay so i have two controllers i'll explain them so first is direct testing and the home one let's call up this one first direct test means like you will be setting the value with some key and you will be fetching the same value just to check whether things are happening or not and uh, this these are two basically methods which we'll be using for the testing you 
the first one just to fetch the data second one just to create the data into the cache and the third one is just to check whether the api is running or not so you, it will be saying you it's working right that means api is running the last one is just to check which cache mechanism we are using so you are you can see here written cache db name so if i try it out right now since the flag is set to false it's that is why it's saying in memory cache service is used all right so let's collapse these two now let's try first we since the service is just now started so data won't be there in the memory cache so what it will be doing now let's try out let's say key one and then give some value let's say value one execute it so you can see data is saying 201 all right so this time the data is created into the in memory cache and then if you do direct testing by the I pass the same key key one and it should return the same value it's saying some value one okay if I give something else let's say two which is we didn't create it with this name so it should say not found you can see not found all right if I save this key also with some data like over here using this post I simply say key two and this time I'll say two and you can say again we got two not one let's collapse it and try the same which it was saying 404 I mean 404 with key 2 and since we just get this now we created so if I execute this time you should be able to get some value too all right this is nothing but all about direct testing so now I'll tell you the actual one in the real uh, scenario how we are going to use the cache all right so this is home controller same as it is this is the actual query which is i have uh, shown you in the image like uh, api will be um, client will be calling that is the cat and the post put it just to and delete is just to show you like how to invalidate the data so that is why i have written it as a document is like invalidated cache on post invalidated cache on update and then delete and return cache data first i'll show you how to create this one first go to the controller So for this I have uh, used uh, like uh, these attributes you can say I am using attribute filter to do this job. What I am doing I will just show you first you can see my method is getting decorated by my cache and then this is 60. 60 second is nothing but the data I am keeping expiry time of that cache. So whenever I cache any data into the cache the time of and uh, expiry time is 60 seconds. All right and all other methods like these are delete it's uh, decorated with invalidate my cache this you can see put and one more is the pause invalidate my cache and this is just a um, you can say prefix of the key i'll come to that point in a, in a while okay so now how it will work so as i would told you in the image whenever api is uh, anyway anybody any request is coming to the api it will first check into the cache if data is not there then only it will hit the db if the data is there in the cache, it will directly return from this. Okay, so th for this, that is why we are using action filter over here. What is there are three things over in this? If my, my action filter, what I am doing over here? So there are two ways. The, I am using the async pattern. Async pattern means like uh, whenever you are creating, and both the cases you can handle like executing, executed, right? Those things in the similar method only using the await keyword. That is nothing but async pattern. All right, so in, I'm decorating with six. So you can see in the controller, it's saying uh, should expire in these many seconds. So while decorating, I'm putting that particular number. So I'm saying 60. So within 60 seconds, it will be expired automatically. That I'll show you how to do that. So whenever API is any request is coming, it will come to this method automatically. I have a debugger. I'll show you that also. And whenever the things are there, that's what we are doing. We're fetching the interface object. I mean, like not enter. I mean, we are fetching this particular service object over here, which is nothing but I service, and same is decorated by two classes. I mean, divided two classes. You can see in memory and the red disk, which I will show you over here. You can see in memory is also inherited in the same interface, and another one is red disk cache, which is also inherited in the same uh, service. Now, if I show you my uh, service in where I am injecting those things, is I should go to startup.config here you can see um, register service dependency so i'm using the same flag which i have shown you in the app setting like uh, if use redis cache if it's false it will use in memory if it's true it will use redis cache okay now just go back to the uh, action filter again which i can go it from here so in this method what i am actually doing first i am getting that object of that particular service and then i am creating getting a cache key 
key so if you go into this method there are many ways the way you want to create it i am how i am creating i am just creating uh, whatever key name you are passing into the query it will you know append to the controller name so the my query name will become i mean the key name of the particular cache will become like let's say if you are typing key one as i showed in the direct testing so in this scenario what will whatever the controller name slash and then particular key one so if you are using home controller it will be like home slash key one so this is the pattern i am following to get the creating a unique key all right so what will happen it will check whether the particular key is there or not in this cache so first get the key and then using that a particular service object try to get the value if the value is null that means you don't have the data into the cache it will just you know written to it will go into that uh, executing that particular method what actually we will be doing in this scenario it will just go to i mean like in the, if you talk about this image it will go to db and get the data but we are not touching db in this example i'm just showing you the simple one and then it will wait to execute that particular method and once that method is executed it's about to return just before the return what it will do it will just cache the data into the cache server you can see i'm using the same object over it see this is to get and this is one to set with the cache same key you can see here and this time it will save the value and expiry time also it will save okay now let's see how it's gonna work so you can see uh, debugger is over here before after and then in this method also we have a debugger over here okay let's try to get i mean call this get method you can see here i'm calling and i'm typing some key let's say i will say okay let assume this is my key name now execute see this method this method on action execution async this method called first and just uh, what i'll do and just close the throttle so that it won't confuse you um, all right and this is the controller one so you can see it didn't it, debugger didn't come here it came in the action filter because i'm using the uh, async pattern and then it on action just before this executed it came here so what it look it will just come here get the object you can see the object is uh, got it got the object and this is the key you can see I, as i told you controller name and the key name if i go to the browser again this is my controller name and the what i type okay so you can see this is the key home slash okay that that is the key got created i mean uh, i mean the pattern of the key is got created and what we are trying to see now we are using that object and it's trying to fetch the value so what we got now that means the data is not there since we also started the service just now so they would obviously data won't be there in the in memory so now you what we will be actually doing we will not we will just not do in terms of anything in the cache side now first we have to execute the method so as you can see like now when i release the control over there it came actually into this class if you go into the image now that means we are at this place we we checked in the cache we didn't find the data then we started doing that operation like now in this time you can do whatever you want to do like in our, in this image if we talk about it you will be actually making the db call but in our simple example we are just returning a date time over here so whatever time i will return now it will be getting cached so you see here i released it now i am returning about to return but just before returning it was a wait keyword was used right so it came just before returning what it will do it will save the data with the same key you can see home slash okay the day value is this is the one is 50 58 okay so now if i return now you should be able to see this value in the browser you can see 50 58 now if i try to execute again you see again it came again here but this time data will be found you can see and it's returning it won't call it see it got written directly and uh, it directly came into the browser 50. if i again call see the get method is not getting called if i call again it, see even the debugger is there it won't call you can see it again now okay so this is all about in memory caching now let's try to do with the same thing with the redis cache all right so for that i need to set it to true and start the service and just make it true and this is my Redis server's IP. Let's see what is the IP. Whatever. Yeah, you can see the Docker machine IP is this one, ending with 101. And you can see it's ending with 101. Now let's see what all images I have. Okay, so I can, as I already have the images. Otherwise, what you can do, you can pull the Redis image, which you can see in my previous video. I'll put the link in the description. All right. Now let's see the 
uh, this um, image is already running or not okay so it's saying up let's try so see if it's really running or not and this I have created as uh, the Reddit desktop explorer which comes from their official website use uh, it got expired in my machine and I have created my own uh, just to do the simple get post not hype by one but just to see what values are there in my Reddit server this is also I covered in my previous video all right so let's see looks like uh, yeah it's up otherwise you can simply say uh, this command docker start and you can put this container ID okay and then it will start since my uh, image is already running i won't be doing that now we don't need that you can see right now i have uh, it, uh, two keys in my Redis server okay let's try to run it okay this i have already explained you in my pre i mean just uh, when i was covering the in memory cache but we'll use uh, still we want to show this method like return cache db name so if i try to execute now it should say um, redis cache server earlier it was giving you in memory cache server service i mean to say all right so this is again simple thing if you want to try these uh, direct methods what you can do get key now we want to try key and you can see my redis uh, is already having some key called y and key 2 let's try y and let's try to get it see it's returning value 1 if you see in my explorer you can see uh, y i executed y now so y is having value 1 if i try to try this key 2 let's try that one also and it should return value 2 so key 2 you can see it's returning value 2 so as i already explained you direct testing means just check whether the things are there in the tp or i mean cache tp or not by passing the key and you can create your random keys also by using the post call all right so that testing is over now let's try to try the same example but i tried with the uh, in memory cache so what we'll do as all the debuggers are already there let's try it again and refresh this one you can see this sexy cache key name was giving red right, cache this was coming earlier it was saving in the in memory cache when we are trying to like give me the cache name okay so let's try to get some key let's say um, key one which is not there as you can see in my explorer key two is there but actually key one is not there okay so let's try to get it so again it came it, this method got called first before calling the actual get now it will check see the query button now home slash key one and value is null so that means the data I mean, cache db doesn't have that value so it will allow us to call the get api and this time it will save this time okay now what it will happen you can see an expiry time is set to one minute and it's ending with you can say 249 i'll just release this controller and you should be able to see the same time is here now what i'll do i'll just refresh this one i should be able to see one more key one you can see it came home slash key one and it has this expiry time if i refresh again see the time is reducing if i call the get quickly in browser again i am getting the same value which you can see also here if i refresh let's wait let it expire then this value also will change because it will pick the latest key meanwhile i'll try to execute again since the time is still there 30 seconds see you are getting the same time and uh, since we have explorer so we can see it like whether when it's getting expired 18 sec seconds and uh, how i have created this explorer that also you can see in my previous video and then and their source code is also available all right okay so you can see that i the key is automatically got deleted because the got expired now if i try to execute this time see it got i mean call this method this time it will say null now it will allow us to call that get method you can see again it's calling earlier it was not calling this get even the default was there right i'll release it it saved the latest time and this time the time is 418 and if i refresh my explorer i should be able to see with the seed key 418 and the time is this one all right so this is all about how to use uh, any cache mechanism into our services all right now let uh, i'll just want to walk you through the code it's very simple i'll just close all okay program file doesn't uh, have any much information 
startup is the main thing so what you need to do you just need to register the db component which is where actually i am doing my uh, in, you know just uh, maybe a little bit there are two ways to get the object of the that it is this one and the, the below one you can use you whatever you want it and then you just need to do what you need to do is call this like default setting but that's not a big one okay and once you register this uh, uh, ready server it will be available and then what you need to do you have this like flag similar thing the way i have it like use want to use ready server or you want to use uh, in memory based on that you have that particular class now i'll show you how to implement this first i'll show you the interface it has uh, some methods like invalidate how to invalidate and then get cache and set cache below one is just like depending on the object it, it will be taking any object and we deserialize that oh sorry serialize that and save into uh, the cache server in a string format i'll show you that you can see over here so it's over here so it's taking the value it's using json newton's of the json convert to serialize that object and it what it will do and it then convert it into a string and then do the same with the same key this is just a time key not a big one how i am doing the invalidate that i missed to explain you right i'll just cover that also okay so let's try to execute the same execute method so you can see it called the get method and value is saved into cache and right now the time is 12 42 if i explore you should be able to see the time and we have 54 seconds to expire it so i mean like it will get automatically expired within 54 seconds but what we'll do we'll invalidate using paste uh, post put and get so we'll try to execute this this one and first i'll execute quickly so that you can see and then if i try to explore this refresh the value is see, removed automatically now i'll show you how it got removed so for that again we have to get the data from the db or maybe something and then save into cache you can see okay sorry i executed the post one i mean to get okay so data is saved into the cache if i refresh you should be able to see it's having this one now if i call any one of them so let's try this time delete and what it's doing it's it's calling on executed method it, it will call after i'm using a different pattern now you can see invalidate my cache and it's it's coming here and what it's actually doing is see this is the same way we are getting an object of that particular service and the path the pattern we have to pass it to the uh, method to remove the uh, key from the cache server so you can see the path is slash home slash key one if i execute go inside what it will do it will find all the keys related to this slash uh, home because our controller name is home you can see over here mm, is here can you see slash home so if i execute it see all the keys are deleted and i am returning the task if i release it and if i refresh this see it we key might have automatically expired that is different story but it will be automatically removed here immediately if i do it quickly this time i will show you again so what i'll do i'll just call get it will call get method because data is not there in the cache it got executed and saved into cache also you can see here now we have 50 seconds immediately i'll just directly this time i'll use put method just to try all the methods you can say it got executed and if i go to quickly refresh it see the key got removed automatically all right so this is all about uh, in how to invalidate the data also from the cache I'll just go back to the uh, implemented method also in memory sorry i was covering this radish you can see it got removed from here all right this is that's all about uh, how to use uh, caching to any particular survey thank you very much